Hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank. In this video, we're going to talk about static local variables and functions in C++. The only thing that you have to keep in mind with static local variables is that they are local variables that can retain their value in between calls to that function. All right, usually when you have a variable that's defined inside of a function after the function finishes executing, then that variable is gone, right? It, it basically, it dies. It's, its lifetime is the lifetime of the function that's been called in which it's defined. But with a static local variable, it lives on. You just have to use the keyword static, all right? So that's one thing to keep in mind. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that static local variables get initialized as global variables. So those are really the only two things that you have to remember when working with these. And we will go ahead and write a program in Visual Studio to give you a couple of examples. All right, let's do it. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example function that uses a static local variable. So it's not difficult. It's just new. That's all, right? So here's how you create a local variable, right? So you can have a local variable and you can call it v for variable, right? And then you initialize it to say zero, okay? Now that's just a regular old local variable. If you were to call this uh, function, uh, so let's say we create a little loop here uh, for int i equals zero, i less than five, i plus plus, okay? And then we call foo, okay? And we'll just have it print out the contents of its variable, right? Again, this right now, as it's written, is just a regular old variable, right? Regular local variable, okay? So if we got that and we compile it and run it, then you're gonna see that we just see zero five times, right? Why? Well, because you know all it's doing is just seeing the contents of V, right? Now, if I was to do something like this, V plus plus, right? So what does that do? Increment V by one, right? So now if I do this, right? So what's gonna happen? We're gonna see one a whole bunch of times, right? Why? Because you know, we initialized V to zero, then we added one to V, and then we printed out V. Okay, and that V variable, it's gone after the function finishes executing because it's a regular local variable. But if we add the keyword static, keyword static, all right, if we put that in there, then this changes everything. It's kind of like a global variable that's only accessible by instances of the foo function. So when we do this, this is now a static local variable and it's going to hang around. It's persistent. All right. So when we call this function five times, as we have been in this loop, then the first time we call the function, right on the first call, V gets created and it's set to zero. Okay. And then V gets incremented by one. And then we print out the contents of V. So we'll see one. Okay. But the next time we call it, the initialization only happens once, okay? So initialization happens once with static variables, okay? So what that means is, is that after that first call, and since it's persistent, V is gonna have one in it. So when we come back and we say V plus plus, that's gonna change that one to a two, and then we'll see two. Okay, so the first call we'll see one. The second, we'll see two. The third, three, and so on. All right, so let's take a look at that. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, just as we said. So that value exists outside of the function, essentially. It's like a global variable for instances of that function. Now you can, as I was saying before, just like with the global variables, it defaults to zero. So we don't have to say equals zero and we're still gonna get the same result. Okay, that's the default. Now you can also initialize it to whatever value you want. Okay, and the first time you call the function, 
that's what v will start at that's what that local variable will start at okay so this time we're going to see 16 17 18 19 20. why because the first time we called the function v was initialized to 15 and then v got incremented by one and then we printed out v right so v became 16. the next time we called the function the second iteration then one got added to 16 and then that became 17 so then we displayed the contents of v which was 17 and and so on so that's really all there is to it okay so that's going to bring this video to a close if you're a student of mine you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video feel free to drop me an email stop by my office hours or hit me up on zoom online for the rest of you if you thought the video was useful please consider giving a thumbs up if you thought the video sucked you got the thumbs down button as well consider supporting the channel in various ways you can subscribe you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents leave a comment whatever but most of all thanks for watching and we'll see you next time